Wagwan, how you there? What's good? And you know who this is, baby. The number one podcast in America dedicated to all you kings and queens of color, homies and homets, shatters, woo gals, G boys, and charges. The one and only Jerk Jalop and Collard Greens Podcast. What's good and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today we will be discussing some key points before you move on to marriage. Jumping a broom is a huge step and it can have high levels of damage if it doesn't work out. So listen up because today we're going to save you money, emotional damage, and spiritual disruption. All right, we're going to hop into CP time, but before we do that, how's everybody feeling today? Good. I'm good, good. Chilling. Excelente. I didn't care anyway. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> so ingenuine <laughs> oh that's that's really genuine that's it <laughs> i'm glad everybody's good um let's talk about the world cup all right so there were some upsets that were really weird so the first one we're going to talk about is saudi arabia beats argentina so you would think argentina would just spank saudi arabia Looking at the stats, started, uh, Argentina had more shots, 13. Time of possession was 68%. Um, had nine corner kicks. Uh, Saudi Arabia had 18 fouls. <laughs> and um, Argentina had 10 offside. So how did y'all feel about that? Man, I'll be real. I have not been following the World <laughs> Cup too much. Right. And like... No, for real. What I saw, I was like, oh, shit, the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. There you go. And I was like, wait, oh Jamaica's not in it? And I was like, wait, Nigeria's not in it? I was yeah. like, all right, well, fuck the World Cup then. You know what I mean? Then I started hearing <laughs> I mean, about it. There are other countries in it that will make a difference. I, I mean, mean, America, I guess by default, I'll have to cheer for America and then England. But I really don't care as much. It's like, it's not Jamaica. You know, I, I could cheer for Ghana. And uh, they, I Ghana, I think they're in there, right? Yeah. Uh, so now we know where you stand. Yeah, I mean, I think FIFA's corrupt anyway. And well, they are corrupt, so oh, we okay. all know that. But yeah, I ain't gonna uh, lie, man. I'm I'm with Glenn. <laughs> 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 i have not. I think actually, my brother was was just in town, and he's into soccer, so he was watching one of the games. I sure don't remember. I don't remember which game it was, but I was I barely watched it. I was distracted, and yeah, so. I've not watched any of the games, but I know a lot of people are into it. So, cheers. <laughs> mm. No, I didn't even watch it, but I just saw like all the videos of like people trolling on Messi for some reason because of like how old he is and like, and it's so weird because he's not even old. I think he's like 31 or something, 32 or something. But for like soccer, he's like a decrepit old man. But he's supposed to be signing a deal for the MLS. All right, so he's. <laughs> if you sign with the MLS, that means your your career is over. <laughs> so, that means you're done. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of crazy that Saudi Arabia man, beat Argentina because they tend to be, you know, a strong team in general, messy or no messy. But again, um, soccer is a game of chance. You can have 70 80 percent possession and you still lose the game. So a goal is a goal. Yo, I mean, one thing that I did saw about Saudi Arabia that was really interesting is I believe the, um, I'm not sure if it's the president or whatnot. The but government. It's, it's, what? Yeah, I know you're talking about the government gave him a day off. For like, no, no, not that. Yeah. He's buying each player Rolls Royce. Ooh. He's giving each player, because of the defeat, Rolls Royce. Roy, uh, Roy, uh, Rolls Royces. And I was like, yo, that is insane. You have that much money. I mean, one, they spent billions of dollars to to renovate the entire stadium and that you have that much money left over to give each player. Like, that's the team I would it's love to ride the bench. Like, that's crazy. It's Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know it's what else the, to say. It's a land of oil gold, tycoons. Yeah, they got, like, I'm just saying, though, but like, <laughs> I'm yeah. surprised Saudi Arabia has that much money. Wow. I was like, God, your, Lee, though. They over here Come peeing on, on your Instagram crush. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. Well, oh, well, hey, all right, moving on, on, on to the next week. <laughs> but that, you talk one. about another upset, just, though. Just, Japan beat Germany, too. That was a big <laughs> one, right? Yeah. 
I might even want to waste my time on this because no one really cares about soccer. <laughs> it's the most interesting thing to me. Like I was someone who didn't care about soccer for years, which is kind of funny. And then, so, you, like, so you watched it. Yeah, I've been watching the World Cup. You're watching it. Wow. Okay, that, fine. Um, so what did you learn? What did you nah, learn? No, it, it doesn't yeah, have the South Africa learn? feel or the Brazil feel. It just feels like, oh, where it is in Qatar. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. It's like similar to Russia World Cup. It was like, oh, okay. It's, it's on. All right. I will say the whole Qatar thing is really making it uh, put a real nasty taste in my mouth when I think of it. So You didn't know people was corrupt already? I mean, I knew, but damn. <laughs> how, about, how about we not get canceled midway through mm. this season? So you're right, you're right. Uh, <laughs> yo, Chucky, that's why I'm saying, like you say, you know, uh, you were not into soccer before. No, I did not like you, soccer. Now, now that no you soccer. watch, now you spend some time watching it. It's football. What did you? What did you, uh, what did you learn? I learned how to. I learned about soccer playing the game FIFA before right. watching World actual Cup. soccer. Yeah. So South Africa. Yeah. So to go back. I did not like soccer, did not care for soccer. And then all of a sudden, um, D Black and um, Glenn would play the World Cup FIFA. And like, I want to play games with them. They're like, oh, we're playing FIFA. I was like, I don't have that game. It's like, oh, well, you asked out. So <laughs> I brought FIFA. And ever since then, I've been playing it. What was it, 2012, 2010 that um, you've been playing it? So I've learned more through the game than I've actually did watching it. And I worked at a bar that would put um, the Premier League games on on like a sunday or a saturday morning so i mean what did i learn about soccer it's it's a gentleman's sport you know a lot of flopping so i'm gonna start using that <laughs> really? life. when see people look at me i'm just gonna fall down and grab my knee <laughs> okay so who was who was the who was the lebron james in soccer i mean because we all know lebron be flopping so who was the lebron james LeBron, i mean but like oh, it's easy. it's i mean but it's, it's, it's it? all the players right that's ronaldo so uh, I mean, Ronaldo can. And does he, he be like flop? That. No, who's the who's the flopper compared to flopping? I mean, but you're Not saying the best but player. Here's the thing, right? So the he way flops. I look at it, it's just like every player in um, soccer or football has the capability of flopping, right? It's just a given trait. It's just one of those things that you learn, like how you do a goal kick or how you do like a free kick. If there's training, I'm pretty damn sure for flopping, right? <laughs> so you go through a whole, <laughs> whole training session of like that's a good flop. That's a oh, bad no, flop. Okay. No, <laughs> so, yo, yeah. it's funny. It, it, actually, talking about flopping, the most, the funniest thing I heard, LeBron, who's already known as a flopper, says, "I don't get enough fouls. I need to start flopping." I was like, "Yo, what?" I mean, for a man that big, <laughs> like they're not gonna call like fouls on call him, right? Anywhere. He's like, "Oh, he already, he already, he already flops though." That's the fun. That's what he I mean, joking. I was like, "What?" To answer what the question, I actually might, I change it. I might be Neymar instead of Ronaldo. That actually might be Neymar. I think Neymar. He's the, Ooh, the flopper, that man. is a good one. But Neymar yeah, is what Neymar five foot like two, crazy. five foot three. Like it's a small guy. So if he flops, it's going to be. But I mean, but dead, there's man. but there's right. some ones that are like taller. He's like six foot. <laughs> Actually, I saw I saw I saw a picture, a still picture of, um, <laughs> of of Ronaldo like jumping and like like just ed edding like the ball header. I was uh, it was edding the ball, whatever, and. And I was just impressed how high he got off the ground. I was like, yo, the dude got hops, man. I feel like if he played basketball, I wonder if he can dunk, actually. I was like, dude, get off the ground. Yo, my friend, why are you trying to scout everybody to come play basketball? <laughs> no, I'm just talking about like, football. And all of a sudden, it became a basketball conversation. No, we're not. I'm just, I'm, hey, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to save the conversation. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's football, not soccer. Sorry, sorry, that was a great commercial, though. I mean, it did stir a great commercial, the football versus soccer with uh, Peyton Manning. And I think um, uh, I, I saw know. that. That was, that was a good one. What, uh, what's his name? Beckham. I'll yep. check it out. Uh, yeah, it so commercial. Morocco beats Belgium. 2 nil, and it's led to a riot in Belgium. So, that's wild. Yeah, that's insane. But no one cares. Um, so shout out to I the mean, I'm not, I'm sh shout out to the U.S. U.S. played, and they tied the game, and it was uh, considered a win. That was but, uh, fun. Shout out England, to the African right? teams. Yeah, they played England. So Cameroon's in there. They're third in Group B. Hey. Brazil, Brazil leads that group. Ghana is last in Group H. Portugal leads. Senegal is um, third in Group A. Uh, Netherlands leads that, and Morocco leads Group F. Last time Which I saw it, they could have they could have dropped. But hey, that's where we're at right now. Shout out to the African teams that are playing. Shout out to the U.S. team. Shout out to England. I would thought you guys would be in interested in African teams, but France is not so much. Anyway, moving on to what would you do? All right. <laughs> so uh, I sent the link. Hope you guys are able to watch it. So here's the scenario: you're at the airport, about to board your plane with your family. 
when someone at your gate starts shouting hail hitler and stares right at you and your family what would you do francis i'm smacking them right in his nose Oh, violent! <laughs> in, in the nose, specifically. Right, right, right in the right? nose, right, just right in the nose. Yeah, I chose violent. I'm pulling a little bit from Chunky this time, so. But I mean, but real talk though, I'm probably just gonna grab my family and just walk away because it's not even worth it. I'll, I'll call security, let the guy, let them know like there's somebody going crazy at the gate. I need to pull them away before I do something crazy. So, mm. but but really, mm. I'm gonna choose peace. Even though a part of me want to choose violent, you know, shout out to Chunky, but uh, but that's I what mean, I'm I mean, do. social consequences, right? Yeah, but like I have to set a good example for my kids, man. <laughs> if I have my kids and my my wife there, I don't want to be smacking Jacking some someone home. for someone yeah. saying hell Hitler in front of you and your family and Bro, staring dead at you and your family. That's why I'm I take that get... as an act of aggression. Right, but I'm gonna get security instead, bro. I'll yeah. because of the consequence that I may. Co- uh, that may that may cause. I rather just, you know, trying to find a way to escape that. So eliminate that as as much as possible. Mm. Still yeah. more to follow. But... <laughs> yeah, I think this is pretty funny. When I first heard it, when I saw the link, I was trying to guess which airline it was. I'm like, oh, this sounds like some jet blue shit. But then, um, I e spirit, our spirit. I'm like, oh, how about wait. we not? This is oh, like boy. actually this is actually happening. What this is like an American <laughs> Airlines or whatever? Uh, yeah, I, think I don't so. think the airlines have anything to do with it. Nah, bro, I'm trust. To make sure JetBlue? we still get endorsed by these airlines. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <Yo. Spirit? laughs> bro. There's a certain an type endorsement of is an endorsement. There's oh, a certain we, type of passenger. Are we classifying people now? Oh man. Oh, now I'll say there's a there's people. a class of passenger on JetBlue and Spirit oh, flights. Sure. Trust me, if you fly it enough, you will see. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're going to Florida or Georgia on JetBlue or Spirit, you already I know. I mean, you're paying low prices, right? So it's like the Walmart or the Sky. But on American Airlines? What? <laughs> Nazis. Hey, uh, I mean. <laughs> Guess who's running in 2024? So it shouldn't surprise you. Man, honestly, I'm like, yo, he's not about to fuck up my flight. So I'm just going to ignore the shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yo, get security. Somebody right, get so security. We're going to stop there. Like I said, I still got a follow-up. And this follow-up going to take a little bit of time. So D-Black. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me again, I would just walk past the person, ignore them, pay them no attention. They're not relevant. You know, I still got places to be. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here's the follow up. Okay. They're sitting right next to you on a plane. I'm gonna change my damn seat. <laughs> nope. Flight's full. <laughs> Flight's Whoa. full. What nah, you mean? Nah. Security's gonna they gonna like nope. they gonna, they're they're gonna, gonna off the escort. They, they sit <laughs> yes. down. They sit down. They talk. Literally. Literally. So they still got on the plane somehow. Yo, and this oh, there's no did. way. This there's there's well, no way they got on the plane. Bro. In, in this video, scenario, he was they at did. the what are you gate. What are you nah, he was do? at the gate on this video. He what didn't get on do? the plane yet. What are you gonna do? He has but, the seat directly next to you. Uh, you know what's the funniest thing though? Those airplane, those fights on the plane are always the funniest <laughs> shit, right? Because it's always War like star. everybody's struggling to get to the person, like ah, his ass. <laughs> and that person's probably like, ah. it's just like, yo, the fights tiny on the ass plane. aisle. Yeah, it's like you're just stuck in your seat in the aisle. You just trying to ah, all this, and it's just like, yo, like, what are we trying to do here? I mean, no. everybody's gonna mass exodus this man off the plane. Everybody's gonna have a hand on him. Probably gonna get stomped out. This is gonna be bad for him. So I mean, thing. he's already on. He's he's sitting right next to you. You still didn't answer the question. What would you do? I'm gonna try to move, but I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna join in stomping his ass out because that's what usually what happens. You go, people reaching over to see, like, fuck you. I got my <laughs> child here. <laughs> <laughs> you know how those fights on the plane be, yeah. bro? It's always no. some stupid, like, huddle, <laughs> playground, huddle bullshit. Yo. So you know why that, that's particularly funny? Because I saw, <laughs> I recently saw a video about like some Karens that was like getting rolled out <laughs> off of a plane. <laughs> So that's why that's particular. Yo, 9-11 me, got us real vigilant these days. I'm telling you, nobody's yeah. playing that no more. <laughs> I don't know Get the cameras out and start recording. That's what I, everybody uh, does. I, oh, yeah, that's actually a good point, friend. Yeah, you should worry about, yeah, worry about your camera just in case. So you got evidence. So you stop, witness the ass. <laughs> so everyone's going to whip out their camera. <laughs> no, no, but you go, well, no, that's not what I'm doing. No, but Go I'm ahead, saying guys. what about your camera to record him in case, you know, legal action is needed, you know? 
puts his hands on y'all, or he gets too inappropriate. But... All right. So the consensus is, is that everyone's gonna roll this man out as soon as you get yeah. No, I would just which is gonna delay, which is gonna drown is. the flight, and you're delayed to wherever you're going to. Now they're gonna roll so instead, of, instead of just whooping his ass before he gets on the plane, yeah, and then bro. security comes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking my family off that plane, bro. It's not worth it. If uh, security, if security is not gonna take him off the plane, I'm thinking my family off the plane. Uh, the safety uh, of my family with our, with our entire family is with the, with more the size of our family. You go yeah. to go and change ticket for everyone, huh? Yeah, I got <laughs> like my yeah. Like, uh, that's, that's a lie. I, bro. I said uh, what I said. Yo, so if, if, if the guy is saying Stop yes to me, cap. <laughs> you think I'm capping? No, I ain't capping, bro. Straight up. Yeah, you know what? Tickets, actually, everybody? you actually get more. You get you get more money because nah, when you no, change ticket, no, they're just like no. They're yeah, just like nope. You can you can freely change your ticket at that point, but they're not going to give you money for it. It's not like what those what places you mean? Like, they're oh, offering yeah, money right. to change it. There's, like, there's like, a lot hey. of bystanders that can use my seat, so they can have it. Bro. <laughs> all right, all right. Crazy. So this is this is what I got. So Glenn will wait to get on the plane to whip his ass for everybody else. Francis yeah. is going to change his flight. D Black, what do you got? I said, like, I'm just going to ignore him. I'm not going to pay him any attention. If, if now, if he starts, like, I mean, first of all, one, he's not, he's going to sit next to me. All right. He's going to sit next to me. He's not going to sit next to anybody of my family. If he, if he's sitting next to anyone that's like in my family, we'll go change seats. And I'm not getting off the plane because I'm not rebooking. All you, we, we Africans, we roll hell, hella deep. 20 some Africans on the flight. Yo, cuz, who's going to switch seat with you, though? <laughs> you? That's no. not that's not feasible, bro. Yeah, overthinking this like you. fantasy football right yeah, now. Yeah, you think you're making a trade and shit. Like just <laughs> stop his ass. They're gonna wait for the black guy to make a move, and whatever he does, everybody's gonna join in. Oh so if it's me, the guy to lead the, the raid. You so know what I, mean? I, call, I call Cap, I call Cap or you. I'm not getting off I that call, plane. I'm I know call, that part. I, I know that you. that's the one thing that remains true. I am not getting off that plane. <laughs> so 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 you're telling me not gonna back hand, backhand him real quick if he keeps talking to you. No, no, no. it's right never... here. It's right here. Chirping. I mean, talking. if you want to add more to the flame, so I guess. Like, you're not going to like, just like, shuts up. I mean, I mean, uh, but like, you, you didn't, <laughs> here's the thing. You didn't shut him up when he was staring at you and your family saying what he was I, I, saying. I, I, and, I, you, I, you, I said, and you didn't tell someone cousin. else. You didn't tell someone else he's violent. No, I'm asking my cousin what he was okay. gonna do. He said he was gonna. He said he's not gonna do nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay. saying, mm -hmm. is he sure he can withstand the Wait, the, 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 the temptation not to smack the shit out of the deal? I I know who to bring. Within like a fight. three to four hour flight, bro. Uh -uh. No, we're talking. We're talking about six hours. You ain't messing yeah, up that's my even flight. worse, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's a, country. And then to get that flight, too. and then to get on another <laughs> flight. No, yeah. they're gonna have to ground it. Like, nah, boot his ass off. Just bring his ass off the plane. <laughs> All right, that's so like, yeah. so like that's to, to end it, the rest of what happened, they actually did arrest the man or detain him, and then they went off. So they better I, because if they left yeah, him I, on the plane, I would write a negative review about that airline. All right, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Strongly worded letter. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, mm. y'all got something you'd like us to talk about? Hit us up on IG. A jerk Joel of color pod you can also follow us for more podcast content all right now that took up a decent amount of time i appreciate that i mean i, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere considering um no one likes fifa all right ah, football. <laughs> let's run it <laughs> all right so they get into the discussion uh first things would be make or breaks uh first thing is does your partner's political view matter Nobody. Oh, okay. Come on. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not married, so y'all need to talk. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is not a marriage thing. I, I mean, mean, I'll okay. talk last, but okay. I'm gonna let y'all lead the charge so, and then I'll so, pop my shit. Did you, <laughs> I no. said, wanted it, like yo, for me, I, I mean, I answer the question. It does matter hmm. because because ultimately, I think it defines the value of of your of your marriage. So, you no, know, you have the the blue party, the red party, independence. But each of those parties, technically, they have their each individual values. So, so what what that tells me, if you guys do not align, you are inviting potential, you know, additional issues into your marriage. So, I mean, you could it could definitely lead to a divorce, right? And you don't want to lead start having arguments and fights. You can't even have a conversation about what's going on in the world. 
you know, like, I mean, one, one of the, like, one example is, like, even some of the student loan conversation that is ongoing right now, like, some people think we shouldn't give, we shouldn't forgive loan, student loan debt, whereas some other part, party think we should. So, like, those disagreement can lead to either conversation between a couple and can have negative impact on your marriage. I mean, it's, it could start real small, but ultimately could grow into something bigger. So for me, just to kind of prevent a lot of those type of issue, I think it's paramount, paramount that, you know, every relationship do as that cohesion, especially from a political standpoint, like it should be a union in that side of things. You know, that's something that I value in my, in my, in my marriage right now. And I think is something that, um, I, I mean, it could it could work. I'm not saying it, it can never work, but it's just it's just opening up your marriage for potentially other issue to get it in there. Mm-hmm. Well, I would just say for me, um, I don't know. Their political affiliation doesn't really matter to me. Is honestly um, how like I guess the strength of their allegiance to that political affiliation would probably matter a little bit more to me. Um, and the reason why is because um, I don't really align myself with a party. Um, you know, we're Black people. We're not a monolith. But uh, outside of that, um, I really don't align myself to a party. We don't all align. Because the reason why I say that is because there is a notorious mindset that we automatically align Democrat as mm-hmm. minorities when we don't. Not every minority is a Democrat, but I don't no. align Republican either. But are you an independent? Think, what'd you say? Independent? Or you just I guess, yeah, probably whoever has yeah, he, never, he, he put himself on the ballot one year, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. remember that? <laughs> good, good, good use of voting. Good, good use. Yeah, it's just... I definitely did. I definitely did. Because yeah, first of all, one, about independent. I'm, I'm about to run <laughs> a huge tangent, but I think one, again, we've talked about it many times, is the, the importance of voting. Um, you know, it's your vote. You own possession of that vote. But, you know, as my man Chucky says, you know, make sure you get out and vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, even if you don't, you don't have to necessarily throw away your vote. You can still vote for yourself. Abby, you know, that's still, that's, throwing that's away a throwaway, bro. That's no, a it's not. What? No, it's not. That's a throwaway, bro. That's the way of vote, Bridget. That's a throwaway. <laughs> that's a throwaway. <laughs> okay, just... wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. All right. I, I'm going okay, yeah, right. yeah. to finish answering the question. But are you telling me that? Are you telling me that that I have to automatically choose? You don't. You don't. You people? don't have to do anything. But what we're saying is just that that's still a throwaway because it goes right. nowhere. Exactly. Yeah. No, but I'm gonna you in this one, bro. No, because I feel like <laughs> if Francis is with me, that means I'm like really correct. It's very rare. No, because <laughs> yeah. because they can tell they can't tell who you voted for, but they can confirm that you vote. You voted, what? but it doesn't. Yeah, but what's, what is your vote? Bro, <laughs> what? No, but can tell you what. <laughs> no, let him go. Francis, let him go. Let him walk out of this hole. Let him think no, but about seriously, it. doesn't it, like, you can still tell, like, what affiliation a person voted for. Can you not? Uh, no, not really. So, like, you can sit there and vote, like, let's say, for, like, the last mid- the last midterms we had, right? There, there yep. are opportunities that you can do. You can vote either Democrat or Republican or both, depending on who has what, right? So if I'm sitting here and I'm voting like, hey, I want this person to be Democrat, but this Republican person has better values for this situation, then I can go in between each one of them, right? So you can't tell what I'm like, who I align with. Mm. Okay. Well, then I guess it really is a throwaway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah cause for I mean, real? because people like, I mean, during like Trump, uh, like the Trump stuff, it was really important for me because I know a lot of people say like, they, you know, they'd rather not vote for Trump, so they just didn't vote at all, or didn't vote for Biden, so they just didn't vote at all. But for me, I was like, that means you, like, you are just making the each whatever group you don't want to win, or the 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 lesser of the evil, whatever people how people say it, it's just making that person stronger because your vote could be utilized in whatever direction. So, um, so I, I mean, I'm a strong advocate for voting for people on the ballot. Mm-hmm. And and if you chose not to vote, it's not open. And if you chose to vote and you put your name on there, that didn't help you. <laughs> well, and I yeah. think that's crazy because it was actually like my so my high school teacher, my high school history teacher, is the one that actually came up with this idea a long time ago, where it was like, well, everyone should vote. You should definitely vote, but if you um, 
don't agree with the kind of the overall philosophies or you feel like that maybe the two candidates are not really good options, you know, there is no, you know, tertiary option to really vote for. That's significant. You, you put yourself on the ballot. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to run with that. You know, so now I know I've been. I, well, so, I, I mean, I guess you answered the question. Did you vote? Yes. Yes, I always vote. <laughs> yeah, I always vote. Voted. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, let's think about it, though. Let's say some miracle happens and you gain the votes. And let's say D-Ron is now president. Like, what would you do <laughs> any different from one of the actual primaries that were selected? What I would build, I would build a cabinet of people who are. Why, why do I don't feel like I'm petitioning for like presidency? <laughs> I know. I mean, you're I trying mean, to walk yourself you out of that hole, right? So, I would, I would build a cabinet that would allow you know the best ideas to come forward, and it wouldn't be based on money. So anyway, because mm. I feel like money drives politics too. Anyway, long pivot from what the actual question was. So for me, again, I would want a partner. I wouldn't really care their political affiliation is just as long as they're more about the values, what values, you know, um, what kind of what values do they have? And that's what I would be picking them based on. Cause I feel like each candidate always promises different things and party promises different things. Those things change. So I mean, but, it, but this is the reason why you vote. This is the reason why you pay attention. Right. So the whole thing is, this is that they're going to oblige to their constituents. So you can sit here and say that, all right, cool, you voted for this person, they're now in office, you're doing something different, but it's a contention of people, that's why it's Congress, right? So yeah. you look at it, if I put a bill forward or, you know, I want to make it into law and the three of you don't agree, doesn't mean I didn't try, right? But I need everyone's agreement or the majority's agreement in order to move this forward. So sometimes that failure on bills isn't so much the person, but the people that are around that person, the amount of people that can get signed on to do what I have to do. Whoever's co-signing it, whoever says yay to it. The reasons why people say uh, nay, and if I can't amend it. So, you know, if you know my stance on politics, you know, don't talk shit if you don't vote and actually pay attention, right? And that's the toughest thing. And yeah. since I need to pay a little bit more attention, because like I said, I've been voting for myself. <laughs> yeah, I would say I mean, like... <laughs> Yeah, I would yeah, say ahead, for me, it does matter, but I'll say step one, do you even know like what's going on? That's what matters to me most. Do you actually know what's going on? Can we actually have a conversation like Fran is saying? Can we actually talk about it? I'm very up on current events. Are you up on current events? So just to have that, just so I know that, okay, if I take you somewhere or we go out somewhere, we can actually hold a good conversation. It's not all going to be about you know, what's happening on social media that's not news related or things not impacting our lives. But I wouldn't say that person has to be a Democrat or a Republican. Like, just know something and know what you defend. Um, I think it does matter, though, like, especially if you have someone that's like hard right or hard left, you know, trying to get them to come together. It just may just be as difficult as getting Trump's taxes. So it's just going to be like, you know, in my <laughs> opinion, like, find someone that you know, I w for me personally, I'm going to say I would want somebody I can learn from. And we can teach each other. Like if, if that person is a right, you know, a righty, then teach me something about them, you know, because I feel like, honestly, I'm going to vote for the best person. I have no allegiance to any particular party. But if it comes down to it, I'm most likely going to lean left because I think some of their ideals, you know, match what I what I feel is best for this country. But I mean, apart I oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. No, I was going to say, apart from that, I think it does matter, but I'm not expecting someone to have the same views as me. I think that's impossible, even if we're both on the left-hand side of things. Because I would say, like, how many of your partners believe or feel the same exact thing as what you believe in politics? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times we're just going up to vote because we feel it's our civic duty and not really paying attention to anything that's happening before the vote. So it, it, to me, it varies, but I think it does help to have a nice common ground as far as when it comes to politics and there may be some give and take there. You going to say something, Frank? No, 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 it's okay. Go ahead. Um, my thing is, is that do you think dating someone on the opposite side leads to a more dynamic conversation and helps you become aware of your blind spots, right? So there are people, Democrat, Republican, Independent, that have really good ideas, but if you're sitting in your echo chamber, you know, your significant other or your spouse will, will talk to you. I think it can work. I mean, I have good friends on, on both ends and we have very strong conversations, but we understand that our political views have nothing to do with our personality and who we are, right? So I, I can separate the two. Like I can have a conversation about the, the most 
right wing or left wing stuff and it's like it's a conversation i didn't know that i had to do my research or like hey we're gonna go back and forth but this doesn't stop me from being your friend it's just like all right now i know how you feel about it i understand but coming to a mutual agreement like my political standpoint does not change about how i feel for you or love you my political standpoint is basically based off my upbringing upbringing and understanding of situations like there's certain things that i like that I know the three of you don't like, you know, I'm pro firearms, right? And and there's a discussion there, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to appreciate you guys tomorrow or appreciate what you have to say. So my question to y'all is, is that dating someone or talking to someone on the opposite end of where you at political, politically, um, does that enhance the relationship or make it worse, depending on how you work within it? So yeah. I think that's kind of, oh, Slash, you want to go first? Uh, no, I mean, you can if you want to. So I was just going to say, like, I'm going to go first now anyway. <laughs> I, <should laughs> pass it up. I was just going to say, like, yeah, like a, a point I was going to make regarding that is, you know, not being ridiculed for having a different point of view, right? And I think if you're going to jump into the political landscape or anything, it's our responsibility first as individuals to know what's happening on both sides before we open up our mouths, right? Because the last thing we want to do is spread misinformed information. But I feel like especially if there's some opposition or you may not be on the same point of view, because that could even happen if you are both on the same side. You may know, know a little bit more about something than the other person does, which I feel like often happens. And with my dating experiences, it's always been me trying to inject, hey, do you know what's going on here? Do you know what's going on there? But when you do that, making sure that you're not ridiculing the person if they don't know something. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a respect with everything, because, you know, in a relationship, you're going to have a point where. You may know something, she may know something, you know, and not ridiculing each other, having that mutual respect and turning every moment into a teachable moment, as opposed to poking the finger or making fun of the person. That's important, especially if we're in public or whatever. Don't ridicule your partner because they don't know something like use everything as a teachable moment and protect them, protect yourself. So I'm actually kind of glad that you went first because you kind of tied in to my thoughts, because I think that. Yes, it's important to have those teachable moments and kind of find a kind of like an area of cohesion between the two groups, whether, you know, the same political affiliation or different political affiliations, like the, 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 the two um, partners. But I still think there's limitations to that. And the reason why I say that is because ultimately, you know, in Chunky's point, he was messing, um, exemplifying friends. Like, yeah, we're all friends, like, and we can talk about, you know, anything but in between us. But if we don't align on a political something, you know, it's kind of like an agree to disagree type of thing. All right, cool. Yeah, you have a great day. I have a great day. I go my way. You go yours. You know, when you live with that person, you live, breathe them. They live, breathe you. Everything that they kind of, in, in, you know, embody, you also have to feel that every day, you know, and then some differences between the political parties go so deep that it can affect just general daily mannerisms so now as you try to raise children and have a family what do they align with you know do they align with mommy do they align with daddy like you they start asking those kind of questions within your households which confuse kids <laughs> i don't i don't think they'll be confused i think it's actually helpful because they get both ends of the spectrum right and then later on this episode, I'll talk about something that's that's an ultimatum, which actually <laughs> touches on that piece. But See, I, uh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, but I do agree with you on the premise that there is, first of all, one. I think coming to the table. Oh my god, I said the table. I said the word. Coming to like people coming together to have these conversations um, of opposing sides is something that doesn't happen enough. I think in America, in my opinion, regardless on, on all spectrums, right? But on a political spectrum, it's very, very difficult. So to your, to you, Chunkies, kudos to you if there is, you know, for believing or having the optimism to see that, yes, it can work, that, yeah, the child will be uh, more diverse or have a more diverse palette and then be able to kind of pick and choose what they think is best. Kudos to you. But the thing is that in actuality, you know, I do think that is probably more, it probably will do more damage than more positive, you know? Mm. So like, it's very hard, you know? And if it, I feel like, again, the risk is so high that if you're wrong, you know, now you have a damaged child with this distorted mindset. I don't, I don't think, I mean, that's with anything, right? <laughs> so, so with any belief system <laughs> or attempted backing, I don't think politics is the only thing in that realm. 
Yeah. So, sure. um, Francis, do you have anything? Yeah, no, <clears throat> no, I was going to say, I think, you know, the idea of, of having such conversation and, but such a polarizing topic though, like it sounds easy to say, yeah, we're going to talk about it, but when the rubber hit the road, man, like it's a different, it's a different topic. And I think it's just, it's just one of those really tough conversations that I think sometimes it's just better to avoid it than potentially invite a different set of problems into your relationship. Relationship are complex enough as, as is. And, and it's really your job to less complicate it, you know, <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying, you know, like you said, I'm not saying it doesn't work. There are, you know, couples who do have opposing views and they make it work. Right. But the reality is, um, having those, um, you know, politic conversation is so polarizing that it is so hard for us to have friendly conversation and go back to where we live without hurting people's feelings. People get canceled for it. You know, it's just the reality of it. And we just got to like, you know, I think we, we don't want to minimize the importance of it where like we know the the reality of what actually happened with this type of topic. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I, how I see it. Yeah, no, I understand that. So the way I look at it is what Ben said in the sense that it's all about a teaching moment. It's level of maturity. Am I mature enough to have a conversation with you and, and put it into compartments, right? So if it's a teaching moment and you're wrong, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong in front of people or in front of your face, but I'm going to accept you for who you are. We're going to have an educational piece, right? And the more you're able to have the educational piece, the better things will become. That's what it, anything in your relationship. So to not keep harping on that, um, here's another hard hitter, right? So could you move forward with your partner um, has a different religious or spiritual belief than you? Yeah, I can. I can, I can do that. I think the the key thing for me is if you are not atheist, you know, if you believe in some form of God, you know, I think I can definitely live with that. Hmm. But but if you completely say there's no God and we all just like trying to prove everything is with science to me, then that's when I kind of like have a problem that I think with that relationship. But because I've seen couples who I, who I really admire their relationship who do share different religion, who are from two different religions and they make it work. You know, they're, um, it was, uh, obviously they, it actually comes with its own different challenges, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're trying to do a, a wedding, you know, especially, especially as Africans, you know, there's different requirements that each religion needs and navigating through that, you know, as its own, it, it can break up a, a wedding or like a, to be couple, even before even the relationship even started, even before the wedding even starts, because of you know the disagreement and the issues between both sides of the family. But ultimately, I said all of that to say, you know, relationships is is difficult, but that is the one that I can definitely try to navigate through. Um, I think we can make that work for sure. Cool. And for me. Um... I would have to say no, um, just because of, I, I don't know. I feel like religion is such a core value for me, a core component of not, well, a core, a core component of who I am or, you know, so it would be something that, again, I would need, want to pass down to my children, my ideologies, and to have a partner that conflicts with those, you know, would be too challenging for me. Yeah, I'd agree with that as well, um, especially if you look at some religions where tend to be on the ethno religious scale, or sometimes you don't have a choice but to convert over if you want that relationship to happen. So it's a matter of, okay, am I going to convert? Or are you going to convert? Like what's going on? So I, I like the point that Francis made earlier regarding trying to make things as simplistic as possible and eliminating as much confusion as possible. I think like the top three things, religion, finance, politics, like making that as simple as possible for me being the non-married member of the panel, I would like to, I have in my mind, like, yeah, I want a person that believes all these things, but, you know, I'm going to try to get someone that's as identical to that as possible. So that means finding someone in the church that I attend, um, you know, someone that's in the same kind of praising circles as me, then that's the route that I'm going to go to make it as simple as possible. Um, and, you know, just get it. And I think that's what the dating phase is about, finding out all these things about the person before you take that next step. So 
But I always okay. agree, yes, I want to have the same, <laughs> my partner to have the same views as me. Okay, so I have a question because, you know, we talked about this when, I forgot which episode this was, when we talk about uh, just uh, the dating phase, then you're like, oops, I actually like this person. Mm. Catching feelings is that when some of this deception comes into play. Like she's fine as hell. You actually do like her. She can cook, she throw down. But the religion part is, you know, it's really like the only part of the relationship that you guys do not, there's no cohesion there. You guys not align on the religion piece. But she's not going to force you to, 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 you know, to change to her belief or you also not going to force her to like transition to your, to your religion. So if that's that, like that understanding there, do you think, like, cause I mean, I, for me, I was like, yo, if I like this girl for every part of her, and that is the only thing that doesn't work for me, I might be willing to make it work. Yeah. I would what say those, think? yeah, I would say, you know, those are all my big three. And I think when it comes to a point made about having children now, what's going to happen when she says, well, I want my child to be Muslim. And you say, no, I want my child to be Catholic. So what's going to happen? Are you just going to split the baby in half? So it's just going to be just like have a Catholic Muslim. No, I mean, gonna... I mean, it, it, it works. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, my wife grew up Catholic and we just did a, a baptism for my for my son, you know, from a, you know, from a Catholic perspective. And I, I'm Nigerian. We have naming ceremony. We do all this stuff. We also did it from my side. So like you can coexist, you know, it, I, I think you can coexist with depending on the love and care that you guys have and you're not trying to like force mm. each other one direction and and that's why i mentioned the couple that i do admire that i've seen who also share the same you know share different backgrounds i see how their their relationship is and i think they have one of the most beautiful relationship and they make it work so so that's mm. why for me i'm like okay it does you can really make it work it just depends on the on the individual What's your value or um, hierarchy, right? I think you kind of mentioned it. If yeah. it is on your top three and you can, you know, like yeah, this is a no for me, mm -hmm. then yeah, then you, I definitely respect that for sure. So um, once again, the way I look at it um, is everyone has valid points, mm -hmm. but being that if you have diverse backgrounds, <clears throat> it makes it better for the child. In that sense that we think about how we were raised and like we're forced into one type of pocket. We can't be anything else but that. And then when we come out of that, we were able to show our parents our level of flexibility. There are more than what they think is out there. And then we became more aware of things that our parents and, and other family members weren't aware of. So it's just like, hey, you have two different political beliefs. And I can see both sides very easily because I grew up in a household that both of my parents were able to have a conversation about politics at the table and it wasn't yelling and screaming. I'm able to soak all that in. And it's easier for me to just identify like, hey, these are the best policies. These are the worst policies. This person's a jackass. This person's amazing. Looking at religion, it's just like, yeah, you're not going to have a Catholic Muslim, but it may drive the child to a different religion, right? it may get them to explore what else is out there. At the end of the day, from what I understand, a true religion is a religion that someone will end up coming back to. So I've studied with Jehovah Witnesses. I've studied with people that were Muslim. I studied with people that were Jewish. And at the end of the day, it's just like, all right, you know, I, I make my decision based off what I understand and what I know. There's nothing wrong with any religion. Honestly, you have a foundation of belief. And that's what gets you through a lot of tough scenarios, right? This is people that believe there's just nothing higher than them that struggle the most because they put all the burdens on themselves. So to me, it's beneficial to have that dynamic. Um, can it be hurtful if people aren't mature enough? Yes, it can be very fiery and, and, and a huge issue. But I think it definitely helps the child if you're able to articulate that and still show love and care I was mentioned before. I have a question, this one mm. real quick. How did you guys get started in the church? Like, was it your parents that pushed you into it? You know, did any particular parent push you into it? Or was that something like, did you identify with it later on in your adult years? Um, or is that something that you had from the beginning we were raised, actually raised with a religion to follow? Yeah, that's a really good question because, um, you know, being Nigerian, you know, religion is fundamentally part of our culture. You know, and there's varying religions, but yeah, it's fundamentally part of our culture. So my parents definitely you know, pushed me into religion very early on, spent a lot of our time in church. Um, but I will say that 
you know, I didn't feel like I found it until like later on in life, until I was mature enough to understand what I, you know, actually had in front of me, you know. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, same here. You know, growing up, man, like we used to go to church like seven days a week, <laughs> every day. And those teaching, though, like it's so crazy because I can draw back to them as an adult. And then because it kind of gave me this foundation in my religion beliefs. And so like, so I mean, so that's kind of how I came up. And it's funny because my mom was the stronger was a, was stronger in her belief than my dad was, and my dad like over time like grew his belief into like to kind of like to my mom's level. But yeah, but it was easier for both of us to for both of them to have the same belief because we knew what it was, right? You know, because we we had family prayers at home. We were able to take what we did outside of the home into the the house so because there was cohesion there there there's alignment there you know we know like there's this union in in the family system or the family dynamic that we had so it was very easy to navigate within my you know scope so um but yeah so that's kind of uh where where my came from um i was forced into it by my grandmother and as you see today, um, I don't identify with any religion, but um, my thing is just that I'm able to learn from all of them. So it gives me a better perspective when I teach, you know, my daughter, like, hey, you can pick whatever you want. Um, I'm going to love you regardless. Um, pick what fits who you are and your personality that you feel more comfortable with. I'm not going to force you into something that you're going to resent me for later. Um, you have to have a belief. You got to know that you're not going to be the only one handling your problems and that you can pass it off to something else whatever you believe that something else to be it's 100 percent on you um but i fully love you no matter what you may find out at the age of 18 you may find out at the age of 56 it's all good as long as you find some peace and comfort the sooner the better um is is the goal and direction so moving forward we're going to go to i can live with it can y'all live with your significant other being a bad driver I mean, like every time you get in the car, you're grabbing the oh shit handle, you're, you're pumping <laughs> in invisible brakes. They're just, you know, just yelling at people, even though they're the one in the wrong. Is, is that something you can spend the rest of your life with someone like that? Like, wait, 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 it's wait, okay. Wait. Hold up. With how bad of a driver, though? <laughs> I'm saying, like, I'm saying they, they make a right hand turn and they hit the curb, like, oops. And your ass is <laughs> <say> up there. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, that sometimes there's those bad drivers that don't drive well, but they don't get into accidents or nothing. But I'm talking about like, I'm talking bad about bad accidents, breaking this, up the politics. insurance, what, whatever, whatever <laughs> a bad driver means to you, right? So, like, I don't care about speeding. Like, that's that's on you and your record, right? Oh, Just, wow, you're a bad driver. <laughs> <laughs> Not if y'all share like, an insurance policy. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's just like how many points you rack up is going to be a conversation. So you can be a great driver and you get into very bad incidents, right? So it's just like, you know, we're used to driving in the snow being from Jersey and we drive around people who don't know how to drive in the snow and then accidents being caused. The entire winter, I'm getting accidents left and right because I'm yeah, a Especially if they're person. speeding in the snow, right, Chunky? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, if you're cleared mm. of, of the accident and it's not your fault or you live in a no-fault state, mm. you know, it's like a subjective Jersey. bad driving. <laughs> <laughs> Like being a Jersey resident and witnessing the horrible driving. Like, hell no. you, you'll hear me road rage. Like if yeah. we share an insurance policy, because to me, that's responsibility, man. And if you're like making insurance, you're making life a little bit more expensive. We may have to reconsider that. Jersey because... drivers are not bad. I'm telling you from experience. They're horrible. Experience. No, drive no, somewhere sense. else for a few years. Like I appreciate Jersey drivers. We get to where we got to go to. The only state I know that the drivers can go 80 miles an hour, bumper to bumper, and not get into an accident. Like, when I come home and I'm on the parkway, I'm doing, like, not about the speed limit. I'm getting past where the car is shaking. <laughs> and this is, like, they're, to me, out of every place I've been, they're, they're the better drivers. Of course, I'm biased because I'm from New Jersey. But at the end of the day, it's just, like, if you cut me off, I know we're going to argue, right? You know, fuck you, fuck you, fuck your mom. All right, have a good day. Other places, like, people will cut you off and not even give you eye contact. Like, you just don't exist. And it's just <laughs> Like, that shit know. is infuriating. What? Wait, what? You just want to argue? Is that I the want, point? Like, you wanna, I don't, like, don't want to argue you wanna, with my man. The, you want to throw the bird? But my man. You, but you my know, man. What? What's my the point of the eye contact? Or my then? lady or my them or they. Right. You see me. 
I do not drive a dark colored vehicle. Okay. There's so no if... way you slide into oh, yeah, my yeah, lane yeah. Okay. and I'm in I, I can see myself in your side view mirror and you yeah. still get in that lane. But that's the point. They don't want to stare at you after Fuck they did it. Fuck They're that. trying to like, <laughs> I'm right. trying to get out and of this traffic. And we in oh. traffic. Yo, Yo, your range of acceptable driving oh just God. keeps increasing. <laughs> I know. For me, oh, that's a, me a hard That's no. okay. That's Jersey. <laughs> uh, and they're revising our conceal and carry laws now. So, yeah, you may not want to get into that that bumper to bumper, that uh, fender bender or whatever. Now. But it's I've okay. Been in, but, but it's like, chunky, been, though. I've been in states. Chunky like, like, chose not violence. violence. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> anywhere there's violence, he's okay. <laughs> I, I, I will weigh it out. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to sit there and just punch the window out in your car. Like, nah, like there's, there's, there's a limit. But if you're you doing some reckless shit, you ain't yo, been here bro, long I, enough, I, bro. I, I you're on the lie, West man. Coast too long, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm, yo, I be I be scared, man. I remember I was I was Come I was in, yeah I was on a trip to Arizona and my boy was driving and I thought he was driving real reckless and he's like going back and forth back and forth with this other driver and I swear to God I was nervous because I was like I don't know what this other driver is gonna do but he pulled up next to me so. Um, on the on the right side i was like well, bro i'm in your driver's seat like whatever your issue is i'm gonna get hit first like <laughs> i don't want to get caught in your little bs bro so uh, like this is so that like that's what i'm saying seat, just will climb back no nah, no nah. <laughs> it's not in a back. every time an <laughs> accident happens it's not the driver that get hurts it's the passenger i don't want to be a casualty that here. part Ooh, that's yes behavior so so please when i'm in the car please keep it cool this is for all of the audiences. So don't 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 but get in the car with me. So yeah, so well, you tell people lesson learn, learn, lesson learn, every yes. driver to make sure it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> it's on and popping. Nah, because I mean your partner could be in the car with you and they'd be popping off, and next thing you know you're in a road rage. And shit, but like you know so like mean? so let's take that for example, right? Let's say mm-hmm. something happens and someone pulls up and they they run in their mouth, right? So it's like I'm putting everyone else in danger. So I have to make the best conscious decision, not only for myself, but for everyone in the vehicle. So if that means not engaging, that means not engaging because it's not a sense of like, oh, whether or not I'm a man or not, whether or not I'm powerful or not. It's just like, did you say worth the squeeze? Now, if someone decides to act out of pocket and puts either someone in my vehicle at risk, especially my little one, you're not going to live to tell their story, right? So I, I've heard of someone like going to someone's backside window, punch the window out with their child in the car seat. And it's just like, to me, there's no longer a discussion. Like to me, that's you're done. Like that's not even driving. That's just crazy, bro. <laughs> but like, yeah. but we're talking we're talking about road rage, right? If you're mm-hmm. in traffic, someone gets out and just punches out the window where your child's sitting. You're not like, oh well, I, I want nothing to do with this. You know, let's just ignore it and let's just drive off. Like no, like that glass is splattered on my child. You cause trauma to my child. I'm gonna cause some serious trauma to you. Well, my thing is like, okay, <laughs> yeah. so while you're getting in the fisticuffs with this person, that's not gonna stop your child from who bleeding said, out or who still said, getting scarred. Who said up. I'm getting in the fisticuffs? Who says I'm not gonna? Well, you said, what are you, you gonna do? Like, I'm, gonna some trauma, though. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some trauma. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I, I don't know, like, well, for instance, I was driving <laughs> a little knee. Come, come to me and test me. <laughs> you know what? You know what, uh, Fran? Come with me to the range. Yeah. Come with me to my fighting classes. See how much I'm capping. When I got a little one in the car, man, I'm in the right lane all the time. I'm driving the speed limit. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm in my zone, man. I like don't know. The right lane is pretty scary. That's where people merge in and out. So. To try to weave around you. I don't understand it because they don't know how to drive. And that's that Jersey stuff, too. Like I said, you haven't been driving long enough. I mean, I drove with like, D Black in Georgia and I was scary. Yo, Georgia's what? like, it's a, it's a 30 lane highway. 30 Yo, lane D Black was on the opposite lane of traffic at one point. I'm like, yo, bro, you the wrong lane. First of all, what? Yo, this is, yo, oh, boy. Like, all right, you can't all go. Go. But I'm not, I have a question. What if your partner's popping off? And I had this, it had happened to me one time when my partner was, the one. I was driving, but my partner was popping off. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Like, it's so, not even worth it. Like, have you ever ca- heard of this thing called a brachial stun? Brachial stun? So I'm a brachial stun my partner? Yeah, it puts him right down. Like, oh, it, it causes God. no <laughs> damage. <laughs> 
puts them to sleep, <laughs> it stops the situation. If they wake up, <laughs> the threat is gone. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand. Like, it's a question that's a hard no. Like, now nah, we got to have the same views on driving. So, add that up there. That's the top four driving, oh, I see finances. Are religion. we going to go back to like not letting anyone put your relationship you don't want to be? It's just yeah, that, that part, especially if you can't drive. Oh, yeah. right. Listen, listen well, like, man. Like, force you to be in a, in a relationship. Like, like I said, I, like, you, Fran thinks I'm capping, I'll hit someone to break your stun, fights over. That's it. Like, you don't have to always resort to the maximum level of violence, right? So if my whole thing is just like, okay, my 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 child's bleeding out in their car seat, I'm calling I'm on one, this person's running their mouth for you to fight, I'm gonna put you down with the quickness. That's it. I'm I'm not there to go fist to cuffs. Like I don't I don't have the time or the effort. It's just like let's just finish this. So once again, Fran, the 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 door's open for you to come and, and visit me and, and witness the things that I do. Witness me, brother. I mean, all, all I'm saying <laughs> is come capping, come come yo, check it out. Yo, we need yo. to bring like dueling back, like proper gentlemen, you know, get the gauntlet, that, the, the oh, slap boy. with the I gloves. Challenge you to a duel and this bitch slap no, him and no, then it goes I'm off. Straight, I'm straight on there with Chunky though. I know that. <laughs> I mean, you want to call a capping, so like yeah, yeah. yeah capping not against me. Like, what you mean? <laughs> 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 I ain't dumb. <laughs> no, but like to answer your question though, like I think I can definitely do it, but the only the only uh, situation that I would like say no to is if the person is uh, like drives is a, has a DWI on their record and they constantly haven't learned and they have multiple DWI on their. I mean, but they, if their license is taken away, they won't like. I, I hear you on that. Yeah, but like um, you, your your license does eventually get reinstated, right? So, but if you it's, show it's a while, it's a very long time. Like it's there's a certain limit where you can only get but so many DUIs and your license is suspended and definitely. Yeah, but like if I meet if I meet a girl like during the transition to gain a license back, right? Or she just well, she's fired. like, hey, I, can you pick me up because I guess I got a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like you have to worry about driving. I'm like, like, nah, yeah, I'm good. So I'm good. <laughs> exactly. Like, yo, that's a sign. Like, okay, I don't know if hey, I want to deal with I'm that. Good. To each yeah. his own. Yeah. Um, I get Uber check. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm saying multiple because I know it happens, right? Because, I mean, you have one on your record, that's fine. But if you, like, have a tendency of, like, constant rebehaving bad behavior, yeah. that means you, you could put my life in danger. You could put, if we have kids, put yeah. our kids in danger. And I mean, just, but that's a different situation. Just, that person's an just, alcoholic. So I think that's a that's a different thing you need to speak to, right? If this person is drinking and driving, um, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, that is another. That's a that's another layer to that, but it also ties back to like just driving behaviors, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I was kind of re referencing there. Makes sense. Yeah. Um. So, what I have, like we talked about before, um, the ultimatum. If your partner is struggling to communicate in fundamental conversations, is that over for you? I think More married so. men. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would say, I, I, I say, I think uh, I jumped on that. I think so, because you said struggling. I don't know. It makes me feel like if it's something it's impossible, like if I feel like that individual is, a, if it's impossible for us to actually communicate with each other, then then yes, because the only way to make progress in the relationship is through communication. Um, and I guess more and more, as I've kind of learned in life that it's not even, I don't even say it in a negative way that, you know, people communicate very differently. Like we can literally be saying the exact same thing. Like I can say over there, you can say over there, you can say here, here, and up, down, and we can literally be referring to very different things. So um, yeah, so communication is extremely fundamental. I mean, if you can learn to ultimately get on the same wavelength, then yeah. But if it's something that is just not like it, like I don't know. I, if it's something that feels truly impossible, then that relationship is going to absolutely struggle. Mm. Yeah, no, I definitely no. I want to call it like it's over, because I mean I think it's you have to kind of examine why, you know, you having those issues. You know, um, you can there's some actions that you can take to maybe try to improve it. You can go to counseling, you can get some some help, you know, get some third party help. But um, but if if the if that the lack of conversation is leading to additional problems in your relationship, then that, I think that's when you need to really, you know, take a step back and and examine if it's uh, if it's worth 
keep going in this relationship or staying in this relationship. But ultimately, I don't think, you know, the inability to have, you know, you know, meaningful dialogue, you know, will lead or be the reason to just end the relationship right then. Uh, but if it's something that, you know, after we get some help, get third party help and still not improving, then I think, yeah, then I can definitely pull the plug on it. Right. Yeah, I think on the matter of communication, like you hear that a lot, right? That communication is pivotal. Communication is key. It's the most important thing. And if we don't have the ability to correspond or solve problems, to me, that's the beginning of the end, essentially. So, I mean, I, I get it. Like, I mean, even with my past experiences, just, you know, there is not going to ever be that Per the idea of perfection like whatever that the idea you have that okay this is the perfect relationship like let's get rid of that completely it's going to be that continual learning and growing and i think the thing that we don't realize with communication is the ability and the want to to grow within that relationship so there's going to be some give and take um and i think that's really the crux of it a lot of the times you want to stay fixed to what we know and what we think is best and a lot of times we're not realizing that we're looking at love from, you know, a fractured frame mm -hmm. that a lot of us, you know, witness relationships that we grew up in and that maybe didn't have all the answers, you know, that maybe even left us scarred, you know, left us with some baggage that we have to address. So I just say take every relationship for what it is and accept taking out what you want it to be, but for what it is and what's presented and provided for you. And yeah, you can have your checklist and see if those things are being marked because that is important. It is important to have standards and boundaries. And I think you know one of the things we do get into a lot of trouble is we think we can change people within the course of time or within the relationship. And that's not always the case. Have in mind, this person may be who they are for the rest of your relationship instead of thinking where it is going to go, or what it's going to be. That person as they are at that moment, can you love them for who they are and accept them who they are if they never change and i think that's the key thing to look at yeah uh, that makes sense um gentlemen yeah if anything I, if just were to add one point is though again i i do think that it's a very difficult position to actually like say with an absolute that if something is over but you know, it really comes down to the tenacity to continue to work on something. Because again, I, now we're talking in an absolute situation where you literally speak different languages or something. And it's just like, you just can't converse with each other. You can't bring your, you have no ways, no mechanisms of bringing your ideas together, whether it's on paper or there's no way of expressing that you think something differently because it doesn't always have to be verbal cues. It can be physical mannerisms or little gestures and things like that. So finding other mechanisms to communicate will still lead to a fruitful relationship. Um, not always making it about you have to explicitly say something. I need to explicitly say something in a very specific way so you can understand the fundamentals of what I'm trying to say and all this damn rabbit hole stuff. Like is understanding that communication is a very com complicated thing that can still lead to a successful relationship. Now is when all of that, all of that is not available to you. Like there's nothing left, you know, I feel like it's very difficult to have a successful relationship with that, without that one. Cool, you come off in traffic and punch you in the throat, is that clear? <laughs> <laughs> then we'll have a relationship with your fist. You're gonna get a brachial <laughs> stun, protect your brachials, yo. You know, I was thinking about that. I was like, I hope the, like, are we talking about like hitting someone in their elbow or knee? Because that's Why would the, you, nah, because man. everything else is assault. So that's just, how you hurt yourself. So I, so I can legally <laughs> punch someone in the elbow or punch them in the kneecap, and that's not considered assault. You're gonna be assaulting your own fist. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the hardest points in the like, body. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how that's. Not <laughs> anyway <laughs> for more content and learn more about the podcast feel free to check us out on jerk dollar collar pod on instagram podcast episodes drop every week stay tuned for the outro coming up right after this to learn additional ways to reach us and send us your feedback be sure to like share follow or subscribe like what you're hearing feel free to leave us a review on your preferred streaming platform of choice see you all again next week
Peace. Peace. Spence. <laughs> wow. Wagwan, how you there? What's good? It's your homie G with the Jerk Jaloff and Kyla Green's podcast, extending a major thank you on behalf of the team for checking out this episode. Love what you heard? Leave us a review on your podcast streaming platform. And don't forget, don't be selfish. Share this with your friends. Looking to get more podcast-related info, major announcements, discussion questions, follow us at Jerk Jaloff Collar Pod on Instagram and Facebook. Questions for the channel or any member of the team can be directed to jjcpod at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for getting your weekly dose of culture here with us. And on behalf of the team, thank you. Stay healthy, wealthy, blessed, and safe out there, y'all. Until next time, peace.